Hello guys, welcome to the camera sample video regarding the Ulephone Gemini Pro. This one will be a little different from the usual camera sample videos, so please make sure to give some feedback in the comments if you like this better than the usual camera sample videos. So let's get right into it, starting with a look at the camera hardware. On the rear of the Ulephone Gemini Pro we find two cameras, both are based on the Sony IMX258 sensor. Both cameras operate at 13 megapixel resolution, but one does color shots and the other one is a monochrome sensor, so it does black and white pictures and is responsible for capturing the depth of the pictures to generate a bokeh effect. Also we have a quad LED flash with two colors and we have a secondary microphone for video recordings. The main camera has an f2.0 aperture and the front camera which is an 8 megapixel sensor has a f2.2 aperture and it also comes with a front LED flash for selfies and this one is actually unusual bright so you can take decent selfies at night or halfway decent selfies because the camera isn't the best but more about this later. So before having a look at actual camera samples of the Ulephone Gemini Pro let's just have a quick look at the camera application. This is how it looks and it is basically um, the same camera application as used on the Yumidichi Z Pro. So when you start it you are in the normal photo mode. Here you see a little control for zoom, so you can tap this, then you will get 2x zoom and if you tap it again you get 3x zoom. But of course that's just digital zoom and not optical zoom, um, so it um, reduces picture quality. On the top you have some more controls, here you can control the LED flash, you can enable and disable HDR mode, you can enable super night mode which uses both cameras to get more light and detail out of low light situations, then you can also trigger the live photo mode which does record a short video clip for each and every picture taken like on the iPhone. And we also have a button to get into more settings regarding the photo mode. So here you can, for example, um, set the timer, turn the shutter sound on and off, turn GPS location on and off. You can change the resolution and aspect ratio of pictures. You can turn zero shutter delay on and off and all that stuff. To switch between the various modes available, you can either swipe across the picture with your finger or just tap the modes on the bottom of the camera. So let's quickly go through all the modes available. We have a panorama mode so you can take panorama pictures. We also have a classic video mode which is of course for video recordings and you can actually record videos with up to 4K resolution but there is no electronic image stabilization and there also is no continuous autofocus, so you always need to do tap to focus when recording videos. Then you have a pro photo mode, which allows you to control various um, settings yourself, but sadly there is no control for the focus and also no control for the exposure time. Then you have a face beauty mode, which tries to get your skin more beautiful if you take pictures of yourself or of other people. Um, this works fairly okay, but of course it doesn't do wonders. Then of course you have the bokeh mode, which takes pictures with a nice bokeh effect um, and of course makes use of the dual camera for that. Um, while shooting you can change the aperture value here, which makes the bokeh effect more or less intense. And after you took a picture, in bokeh mode you will have to adjust it afterwards for a decent result like on the Yumidichi Z Pro. Let me just show you that. So for this example we are taking a picture of this power supply and we want to get the power supply sharp and we want to get um, the background unsharp. So to do so we simply enable bokeh mode and then hold the camera to the power supply and then adjust the aperture value to our likings until we are satisfied with the result. 
I think this is okay and then take a normal picture and once this is done we can adjust the taken picture to get a decent bouquet effect. So now it's loading and once this is done I can tap on the screen to bring up the menu and then press on the little flower and then on refocus. And now I can adjust the bouquet effect to where I think it looks the best. So if I increase um, the aperture, as you can see the bouquet effect gets more intense. And if I, sorry, if I reduce the aperture, it gets less intense. So I think the most realistic result is f2.2 and I'm satisfied with this so I'm gonna save it and then I have my ready-made bouquet shot. Another feature the Uliphone Gemini Pro offers in bouquet mode is recording 4K videos with a bouquet effect and this actually does work fairly good, surprisingly good actually much better than the full HD bouquet video mode on the Umidit GZ Pro but again more about this later on. And then the last mode available is a monochrome mode. This one disables the um, RGB sensor and only uses the secondary monochrome sensor to take pictures. This of course will result in black and white pictures and they are supposed to be more detailed and well just look better than monochrome pictures taken with a color sensor. Um, if this is true or not, I think everyone has to judge for his own. So next we are going to have a look at some samples taken on the Uliphone Gemini Pro. And I want to start with the front camera, which is the least impressive camera module of the phone. Um, let's just have a look at a sample. And as you can see, this has been taken on daylight, but there is a lot of noise in the picture and the amount of detail is rather low and the picture looks kinda unsharp so the camera is a lot but definitely not good. What's good though is the front LED flash. This picture has been taken using the LED flash in total darkness and as you can see the amount of light isn't only enough to get my face bright but also the background to a certain degree which is decent so it really is a pity that they didn't use a better camera sensor inside the front one. Surprisingly, videos do look better. This has been recorded in full HD mode on the front camera and it doesn't have as much noise. It still doesn't look perfectly sharp in detail, but it definitely has much less noise than pictures. So videos actually are usable and audio quality is good too. So let me just play this sample natively now. This is full HD footage recorded on the Uliphone Gemini Pro's front camera. Next let's have a look at pictures taken in the normal photo mode of the Uliphone Gemini Pro. Let's start with the first picture. And this one has been taken under medium to good lighting conditions and as you can see um, the camera has some software issue. It's definitely not a lens issue, but a software issue. Um, at some parts, the image looks sharp and really detailed. For example, uh, the roof of this house and also some leaves here of the trees. But on some areas, it looks blurred and lacks details. For example, on this tree, on this tree, and also on this area and this one. Let me just zoom in a little bit so you can see this better. So the amount of detail and sharpness isn't consistent throughout the whole picture. This definitely isn't a lens issue. This is a software issue. So this could be improved by future software updates, better optimization. Let's hope for the best there. And what becomes quite obvious fairly quickly when looking at pictures taken with the Uliphone Gemini Pro is that it doesn't handle the dynamic range adjustment as good. So often pictures look a little too bright, a little overexposed and it doesn't handle it very well when you have pictures um, that have very bright areas in them but also very dark areas. 
Um, also, in general, pictures don't look as crisp, sharp and detailed as they should be. Um, they always look a tad unsharp, they always um, lack some detail, as you can see here very well. Um, with direct light, um, the camera also tends to generate a bit of fogginess, which you can see here. But also sometimes pictures look flawless, like on this one. Here we have a decent sharpness, good enough detail, colors look okay, not washed out. And there also is no fogginess in the pictures. What it does handle very well is moving stuff like people or even water. And uh, this is even the case from a greater distance, which is surprising. You can see this here. Now with a greater distance, the water still does look sharp. And here again, a really nice picture, which does look flawless. But again, this is not a consistent result. It's kind of random. Sometimes pictures look great and sometimes they don't, which really is a pity. In general, close-up pictures tend to look better most of the time. You can see this here. This one looks stunning. Great color, great amount of detail, really nothing to complain about there. But then with something more far away, you again have this lack of detail, this unsharpness, um, which makes pictures look not so nice. Here another close-up shot of a butterfly. This one came out pretty nice as well. What I have very mixed feelings about is low light performance of the Uniphone Gemini Pro's main camera. Those pictures, those two, have been taken using the LED flash. As you can see, the LED flash is really bright and you can get decent results with it, but only um, within a short distance. If you take a picture of a larger room, it tends to be blurred if you don't use a tripod because the camera is very sensitive to movement, um, which is visible on those two pictures very well. Those have been shot using no tripod at all, just with the bare hands, and those are blurry because of the shaking. But on the other hand, um, this doesn't mean the low light performance in general is bad because if you use a tripod you can get decent results as you can see here. You can see the lightning, here one more lightning captured with the Udiphone Gemini Pro and as you can see on the lanterns here and the light inside the windows, um, this has been taken in almost full darkness um, and still it got a fairly good amount of light out of the pictures with not so much noise in them. So if you use a tripod you can get decent results with the super night mode. So next let's have a look at pictures taken in the dual camera or bokeh mode. Um, this one actually does surprisingly decent results, um, but you need to have some experience on how to use it. Um, it really depends on how you take pictures and what um, aperture setting you use. You can't just um, point and shoot and expect to get a decent bouquet effect. That's not possible on the Uliphone Gemini Pro. But if you know how to use the aperture setting you have available in bouquet mode and then play around with uh, the um, refocus setting you get after taking a picture, you can get a decent bouquet mode results as you can see here. Um, this one came out really nice, this one too. So here we have some, some issues with the edge detection, um, which isn't perfect, especially here on the spoon. But still it does look decent um, for a phone of this category. This one came out very decent as well. Here it left out some parts um, for the bouquet mode but still it does look decent. Here the bouquet mode um, 
draw some areas unsharp that are supposed to be sharp so again some edge detection issues so with very complex um, um, contours um, the bouquet mode has some issues this one came out really nice looks really realistic like it was taken on an SLR camera this one looks stunning too on this one we have no issues at all with the contour or edge detection of the bouquet mode this one came out really nice as well and this one is stunning too despite being rather complex so everything in the foreground is very sharp and um, almost no blurry edges and the bouquet effect is really nice and realistic on this one so this is one of the best results i've got with the Ulefone gemini pro to date looks really nice this one is a rather complicated picture yet it performed decent as well some parts are a little bit blurry but still looks halfway decent this one looks decent too and this one looks decent as well so as you can see the bouquet mode really is usable on the Ulefone Gemini Pro now one of the most interesting and exclusive features on the Ulefone Gemini Pro is the possibility of recording bokeh video but not in full HD resolution like it was possible on the Umidigi Z Pro but in 4K resolution and that's something I haven't seen on any Chinese dual camera phone yet so how does it perform well it depends um, in general videos with bouquet mode can look really good um, but you need to take care not to shoot something that moves a lot because if something moves a lot it tends to lose the sharpness on the foreground object i can show you this on this sample so as you can see as long as it doesn't move much um, it looks very nice but as soon as you get um, a lot of movement in the pictures it starts to get blurred from time to time um, also the background sometimes loses its blurriness um, so that's something they likely can't fix because of a lack of processing power but it's something you need to know if you want to get decent results but if you use it the right way with something that doesn't move too much and also have the right viewing angle you can get really really nice um, video results so let's just watch some samples in native So the last thing to have a look at is normal 4K recording and uh, this one actually shares some of the issues um, pictures have. In general in a landscape mode videos lack detail considering it's 4K. So they do look a little unsharp, lack some detail. But in general um, the video quality isn't bad, um, it's just not as good as it could be. Um, audio quality in general is really decent too. What does look great though are close up and macro videos recorded in 4K resolution. Um, like you can see here, the amount of detail is really decent then. So again let's have a look at them in native. Nahverkehrszug nach Hof, über Bayreuth, 8, 8 Uhr 37, von Gleis 20. Die Szene aus dem Bad Binzi bei Erfurt in Leipzig, Mitterfeld, 8 Uhr 38, von Gleis 6. Nahverkehrszug 
Osnabrück-Sonneberg, Überschutz, Erlangen, Bamberg, 58 von Gleis 4. Wegen der nächsten Reisemöglichkeit nach Zirpel auf die Lautsprecher einsagen am Bahnsteig. Wir möchten uns in allen Fahrgästen verabschieden, die aussteigen. Sagen danke für die Reise der Deutschen Bahn. Auf Wiedersehen. Ladies and Gentlemen, next to Pündernberg, Central Station. And that's it for this camera sample video about the Uliphone Gemini Pro. I hope you enjoyed it and if you want to watch all sample pictures in full resolution, please make sure to hit that Google Photos link down in the video description. So thanks for watching, bye bye and see you in the next one.